everybody. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us. We have a very special guest today. We're going to talk about a really fun topic. We have Pastor Jace Waller with us. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Um, will you just kind of tell the listener a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Jace Waller. I'm a pastor in Telephone, Texas. I'm sure everybody's heard of Telephone. <laughs> uh, I've only been a pastor for, I guess, five years now. Uh, I was in student ministry for 15 years, but I was late getting into ministry at first. So it's, it's, I'm kind of not a real veteran compared to some, but I've been there long enough to, to, to have seen a lot of things and experienced a lot of things as well. Yeah. Yeah, I had the opportunity to meet you at your church, actually. So um, I do know where Telephone is. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, you have to be going there to know where it's yes, at. But it's yeah. a great place, and we're blessed. Yes. My wife and I to be there. So you're married? Married, three kids. All the kids are older, out of college, so it's a good day in the Waller household. <laughs> They're all employed, so it's always good. So, you know, it's, um, it's a neat opportunity to see your kids grow up and Congratulations to y'all as you have a herd in the process. And yeah. I tell you, you go from whatever to whatever. You go past two, you have to go to a zone defense because yeah. <laughs> you can't do the man on man anymore. It's kind of crazy. And bringing up basketball, you are a basketball ref. I do ref. Okay. I do ref here in the Paris chapter and enjoy that and know some of the guys you've talked to and things. And yeah. it's, it's a good time. That's awesome. A lot of fun things about you. So thanks for uh, sharing and thanks for joining us Absolutely. today. Thank you. So today we're going to be talking about a term called progressive Christianity, which if you're listening, maybe you've never heard of that term. It's not really something within the church that right. we, we talk about a lot as much as it is a thought process that we may see um, coming up. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's one of those things that it's almost kind of snuck in mm. and sadly it has, but we, we need to be careful of yeah. knowing the truth and um, making sure we understand what progressive, progressive Christianity is. Mm -hmm. So with that, could you kind of give us a, a simple definition of what is progressive Christianity? Sure. Everything for me is going to be pretty simple. I'm a pretty simple thinker. So <laughs> no, I love that. I love keeping things simple. You know, it's basically an attitude of let's take care of each other, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, let's take care of the earth, which is great. But then we lose focus on truth. Mm. A lot of times the progressive Christianity movement is focused on these things and that they'll pull scripture from the Bible, but then they forget the other parts of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Basically, progressive Christianity is kind of picking and choosing while not believing the Bible as inerrant. Yeah. So not believing it as inerrant, you could even add your own beliefs Absolutely. into that. Absolutely. So how did we get um, here with progressive Christianity? You know, that was one of the questions you sent. It made me start thinking a lot in... It's not something that's happened overnight, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things that has gradually occurred. And in doing so, it's kind of been our own fault mm -hmm. of this this happening. Just through my experiences, I worked in camping before ministry and things and just have been had the opportunity to see a lot of different aspects of family and parenting and all that kind of thing. And... I think one of the biggest issues that we've seen in student ministry as well as as a pastor uh, is parents not allowing their stu their kiddos to experience who God is. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we, we've had the helicopter parents that hover over their kids or even now the lawnmower parents that, that plow the way for their kids. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, and th again, this is just kind of my opinion. In doing so, it's prevented our children from having to trust fully and see who Christ is and understand mm -hmm. what the scripture really means mm -hmm. and is to them. Wow. So it, it's in a context of not having the scripture in the forefront. Is yes. that kind of what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. You know, um, I'm old. So <laughs> growing up, uh, we were we knew we learned what the scripture was mm -hmm. whether we applied it all the time that's a different story yeah. but we knew and we had um 
my friends and I, we knew the choices we made. We, we had that second thought, should we do this? Mm -hmm. And I truly think that comes from the Holy Spirit of understanding the scripture and the truth of the scripture and how the Trinity works mm -hmm. in, in that sense. And I think we've lost that. With um, this kind of progressive thinking, I love that you mentioned it didn't happen overnight. Sometimes when we wake up and look around at the world, it does feel like, whoa, how did we, how are we here right now? Right. It feels really quick. Sure. But to know that, no, this has actually been a gradual process that, like you said, we've kind of allowed right. to take place. Right. So with that, what are some, and this may not be exactly in the notes, so bear with me if <laughs> no, I just great. throw you're something great. at you. What are some ways that the church who knows Christ, uh, knows the Bible, know, you know, knows Christianity to the core, has allowed this to kind of trickle in? Well, I think we have to go back to scripture, you know, in first John two, John's warning us mm -hmm. of those that are in the church that are trying to pull people out of the church. And in that scripture is talking about how, you know, they're trying to do their own thing. They're, they, they, they have a better gospel. Mm -hmm. And so we shouldn't be surprised this happening because it happened then. And we've been warned about it. So us not recognizing it is basically we've kind of let our guard down mm -hmm. and we we kind of said man everything's good yeah. unfortunately you know we live in a country that that it is good mm -hmm. um we don't have to worry about hiding to to pray or hiding to have worship and all that and because of that we've basically kind of gotten lazy mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that, I forgot your question, be honest with you, <laughs> but I hope that was headed in no, that direction. It, it was exactly. You answered the question about how, how has the church allowed this to trickle in? And I think that you were spot on with, we've gotten lazy, yeah. lazy in our guard and sometimes even lazy with under our own time in, sure. in the word, but then also what we're teaching, you know, what we're right. allowing our kids to listen to. So with progressive Christianity, there are um, thought processes going on, and I've had the opportunity to have conversations with people who have these thought processes sure. about, um, you mentioned, you know, love everyone is part of it, and they kind of skew who Christ is and, and his words as, well, we're going to accept everyone and right. everything. And there's this inclusion aspect which on the surface actually sounds really good. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah, we, you know, root for the underdog. And, you know, we've, we've watched those movies where you're cheering for the underdog. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but with that, there comes this kind of confusion with, well, if we're going to include everyone, then what is truth? If, if this religion has a truth and this religion has a truth, how can they come together? Right. It, and, it doesn't make sense. No, it, it truly, if we sit back and think about it, it doesn't make sense. Right. But the, the skewed part about Christ is that, well, he was inclusive. This is what he taught. Can you kind of um, help us backpedal about, was this what Jesus was teaching or is the gospel actually, um, you know, exclusive with with its teaching sure you know i think whenever we look at what christ was teaching he i think he's teaching us that the gospel is inclusive mm -hmm. and that we are to love each other but we don't love who we are at times mm -hmm. or the choices that we made it's it's inclusive for those that want to have a relationship with christ mm -hmm. and i think that with folks that are looking at progressive Christianity, they're saying, well, if he truly loves, then he's going to love me as I am. Well, if that was a fact, then why did he have to die on the cross? Mm -hmm. um, why did he have to save us from our sins? And why, why would heaven be perfect? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one of those confusing things that we make confusing that Christ loves everyone. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Not in, in we, we should love everyone. Mm -hmm. but there, there is a difference between a truth and a lie also. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a fine line. And whenever we, we don't focus on the truth of the scripture, then we can fall into that lie. Mm -hmm. So is the scripture inclusive? It is inclusive. 
for those that want to be a part mm -hmm. of a relationship with Christ. And the thing about it, why is it inclusive? Because it's inviting. Mm -hmm. It's inviting those from cultures, um, mm -hmm. lifestyles, to, to let go of the lies and come to the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's if we start, if we continue to believe the lies, then coming to the truth, truth becomes great if mm -hmm. we believe the lies more than seeking truth. Mm -hmm. And part of the progressive movement is about reason and logic yes. and that we can think to find truth right. apart from scripture, which really gets us into a mess Oh gosh. with, you know, well, I thought this, well, I thought this. And with progressive Christianity, there's, um, you know, we're talking about truth and being inclusive, but they're kind of setting the Bible aside right. and saying, well, with in inclusiveness, what is marriage? You know, is it really between a man and a woman? Right. Or And you start really muddying, well, what am I supposed to Absolutely. believe? Absolutely. So with that, um, and I love, I love how you said that the Bible is inclusive for those who want to be a part of right. the truth. When anyone, myself, came to the faith, um, I had to realize that I'm a sinner and there are things about me, sin, that God does not like, sure. does not love, sure. right? And um, it would it would just be backwards thinking to think that we can come with our sin and stay with our sin. Right. It, it, I don't know. I just, you're making me think with, with that. <laughs> no, that was good. So the issue is with scripture, is it sufficient and final authority? Um, can you share more about how this affects the entire movement with scripture? Sure. Well, you know, what do we base our truth on? Mm -hmm. as, as Christians, we have a dogma that we, we stick with and we believe Christ died. We believe he rose again. We believe grace through faith in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. You know, those. And we have a foundation, whereas something like this or a cult or whatever, there's no foundation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of well, what... What did so and so think sounded good? Mm -hmm. And whenever we do that, as you said, we have to realize we were sinners. So we're we're trusting a sinner to say what is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that there's not wise people out there and things like that. There there are, and Christ um, blesses so many to, for with wisdom. And I'm thankful for those folks <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but it's like C.S. Lewis said: I came kicking and screaming into Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, he was looking for truth and he didn't want to let go of the lies, but the truth overcame mm -hmm. the falsehoods. And whereas I think in progressive Christianity, the laziness kicks in and I'll just do what feels good to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's um, the scriptures there. And as one of our foundational things mm -hmm. I don't know I can't think of another word as Christians is that scripture is in error mm -hmm. that that is truth and it was given to us for a purpose so as as believers and in the future we've got to be more diligent of seeking that scripture and understanding that mm -hmm. scripture would you even classify I know the term is progressive Christianity but this type of thought process would would this even be Christian? Oh, I, if, if you're going to use the word, I'd say we need to change it to regressive Christianity mm -hmm. uh, that, that we're falling away yeah. from the foundation of the, of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I would say absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just thinking about the term of sure. progressive Christianity. It's not really progressing the actual no. faith or who Christ is. It's, like more deconstructing right. the truth and saying, well, whatever's true to me is, is true to me, uh, which doesn't make sense. No, it makes no sense at all. <laughs> doesn't make sense. So as a pastor um, and you've done youth ministry, what, what do churches who believe the gospel, believe the Bible is the truth without error? What, um, what are things that, we need to be on guard about or how can we what are ways we can see this coming in i mean no one comes in and just sure. says like 
this is a, per, you know, I'm That's right. hey, it. come follow me. <laughs> it's like a slow. Right. So what are some things that we could be on guard to look out for? Well, number one, I think that, like I said, John told us we need to watch these folks and know what they're teaching our, mm-hmm. our students, teaching our, our classes. And that, not that we don't trust people, but we want to challenge people mm-hmm. to, to help them stay focused on the truth. And I think as a pastor, it's, it's my, as a shepherd, that I don't let a wolf come into the fold, mm-hmm. even in disguise, to um, harm the, the flock. Mm-hmm. So we have to be on our due diligence of, of paying attention to what's being taught. By saying that, then I have to up my game to make sure I'm teaching correctly mm-hmm. so that um, so that others are hearing the truth. And that, you know, that's one of my biggest fears as a pastor is to um, say something that's not true and it just kind of, I just miss it or something or, or not factual. And I always tell folks at church, if I say something, come tell me, uh, let's, let's figure it out. I, I could be wrong, but um, I guess to protect the church, we have to understand that the church is the bride of Christ Mm -hmm. and we don't let anybody just come in and take our home Mm -hmm. or take our, our children or our wives and things. We have to protect them like we love them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, I think is if somebody's trying to pull someone away from the truth and the progressive Christianity talks about all inclusion, but if if they're pulling people away from truth, Mm -hmm. How much love is there for real? Yeah. What are ways that as a a believer, you know, we want to love God and love our neighbor. What are ways that we can love people, but also stand on truth? Demonstrating the truth. Mm. You know, uh, I think in history, we've seen where the church has screwed it up of, hating certain lifestyles or, or just excommunicating certain lifestyles and just saying, you know, they've basically said sins are in this category, which they're not. And we, we don't accept sin. Mm -hmm. We don't accept lifestyles, but if we don't share the truth of Christ, how are they going to find, find Christ? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously Jesus could, show up for him, but he uses us mm-hmm. to, to do some of that. So as believers, we have to love on those that don't know Jesus mm-hmm. and love, love on them in a Christ-like manner, not a worldly manner. Yeah. Not by just accepting everything. Right. Uh, I, I know I've been told before, um, while in some of these conversations that, well, my view is judgmental. And, you know, by, by saying, well, actually, this is what Christ taught. Like he, he didn't agree with this type of thinking. Um, and I guess sometimes too, when we are loving somebody by sharing the truth, they're not always going to receive that. Sure. And it, they may perceive it if they're not a Christian as judgmental. Right. right. So what would you say in that situation? Should we just continue to share truth? You know, as a kiddo, I, there were times I didn't want to hear the truth Yeah, because I knew I was in the wrong and I didn't want to admit that I was in the wrong. So if somebody came out and demonstrated, you know, this is what you should be doing rather than this, mm-hmm. I would get defensive. And I think the same thing is that Satan grabs a hold of folks. And if we don't continually share the truth, mm-hmm. then I guess we have to ask the question, do we love them enough to be truthful to them? Mm-hmm. And the world obviously is not producing a sense of love, you know, of true love. Mm-hmm. And we're really just doesn't give a rip about people. Mm-hmm. So do what you want, live the way you want, believe what you want. And that's okay. We're that's, it's not, I mm-hmm. mean, your kiddos, as they grow up, if you don't direct them in a certain way, then Katie bar the door, they're going to, you know, chase after the coolest, neatest thing, Mm -hmm. the thing that feels good, but it's not going to be healthy physically, mentally, and especially not spiritually. Mm. 
Yeah. And even sometimes saying the truth <laughs> and standing on the truth is hard it when is. the world is screaming back at you. It is. It is. But I love the encouragement that you're giving that we should continuously seek to know the truth and then share the truth with other people. That's what we're called to do. Absolutely. So how can we train ourselves? What are some ways as a believer, maybe somebody's listening to um, combat this teaching and help other people do the same? Well, I just wrote some notes down. Hebrews 10, 23, hold fast, mm. hold fast to the um, confession of our hope and without wavering who has promised to be faithful. Hold fast to the truth. Mm. Understand that, that, what we have in scripture is truth and mm -hmm. and it's there's no mistakes it's a foundation that we can stand on mm -hmm. and so many other beliefs are they have no foundation to stand on and for us to interact with others that can encourage us mm -hmm. you know i talked about the students and parents if we don't allow ourselves to be challenged um, then how can we, I don't think we can grow stronger in our faith at mm -hmm. times. And we just get lazy in our faith of saying, you know, it's going to be okay. Or mm -hmm. uh, somebody, and it comes down and I'm probably talking too much. No, I apologize. No, not at all. <laughs> I think it comes down to why, why only a certain percentage in churches or your teachers or your volunteers mm -hmm. and everything. And a lot of that is we as pastors haven't gone out and asked, mm -hmm. said, you know, come on, why well, can't do it? Well, how do you know? And as believers, we've got to challenge each other to step our game up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's one of those things, you know, I played basketball and things and just teaching somebody to shoot, they'll, they'll start shooting two hands and they say, well, I'm not strong enough to shoot one handed. And you teach them to shoot just one hand without another hand. And eventually they get the shot. Mm -hmm. Same same thing with us. We have folks that think they can't do it. Or parents that say, well, my kid's not, I'm not going to allow my kid to be involved or whatever, to be challenged like that. But if we don't allow them to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. for, for just a little bit, then they're not going to get to experience the true, and this may be reaching out, but I don't think folks that, do not step out on faith, get to experience Christ fully mm. of how amazing he is. Yeah. Uh, what was that verse in Hebrews? Hebrews 10, 23. 10, 23, to hold fast. Yes. Um, also, I, I love what you're saying about holding fast to the truth, being at a church that encourages you, spurs you, challenges you. I was also thinking that if a person's listening and maybe they're not involved in a church, right. want to get involved in a church, this type of um, ideology of progressive Christianity labels itself as Christianity right. and as a church. Absolutely. So that is scary in itself that when a person attends a quote church, it may not even be sure. a gospel teaching Bible believing church. Right. So um, could you just kind of, tell somebody some top things when they attend a church, what do they need to be looking for to know, okay, this is a place I can grow. Right. You know, I think we have to go to your second podcast you ever did. I was listening to it as I was traveling back and forth um, this past few weeks. And y'all talked about the dogma and the doctrine, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think you have to go in and know what, what does the church believe? What is it base? What does it mm -hmm. build as foundation on? And start there. Yeah. And, you know, we, we want to start big music and all that stuff and how good the preacher is and all that. So, that that's just the outward part. We got to start mm -hmm. with the foundation. Find out what is that church built on, mm -hmm. and does it does it believe scriptures infallible? Does it believe that salvation is through through mm -hmm. Christ? Grace and, does it believe that um, you know Christ died and rose again? And to start small mm -hmm. almost, yeah. and allow and just not be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I um, thank you for bringing that up, that sometimes when we walk into a church, it's the first things that we see that right. really grab our attention. And we we say, oh, this is going to be my church because of the, the music or, you know, how it sounds or stuff like that. Sure. But no, it's actually the foundation of the beliefs that everything grows on. Right. So, 
yes, if you're listening and maybe you don't know if the church that you've been visiting or are thinking about visiting is right. a progressive thinking church or a Bible believing church. Those are some questions um, that you want to ask first and foremost. Absolutely. So um, I, I know you have a lot of notes, so I don't oh, want to miss no, it. Is no, there, they're is there anything great. else that you wanted to share? You know, um, I think find, find people in a church that's real, mm. uh, that, that they're not afraid to, or a pastor's not afraid teacher to say, I've messed up. Mm -hmm. This is, this is who I was before Christ and find a place that allows you to say, you know, this is what Christ did in my life, mm -hmm. how he changed me. And I think with the progressive Christianity, you, you don't hear a lot about change in the mm -hmm. person. It's more of what I can change for someone else rather than what, how Christ changed me. Mm -hmm. um, go back to C.S. Lewis, you know, he was looking for change. And in that, he, he said, I came kicking and screaming. Again, if we're going to find the truth, it's not going to be easy because Satan doesn't want us to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take some fight and some kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever we do that, whenever we find that truth, we, we or whenever we find Christ, we find that truth mm -hmm. and everything begins to make sense. Like mm -hmm. you said, all the progressive stuff, it really makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But whenever we find Christ, we, we, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. The truth. Everyone who met Christ within the Bible was changed. Absolutely. And, um, some, sometimes that's uncomfortable, right? To leave sure. your old life behind. Sure. Your sin behind things that, and sin is um, pleasurable for a season, right? right? To leave all that behind, but following Christ demands change, obedience, you know? And you pointed out something that um, I hope everyone caught, which was within the thought process of, well, whatever's true for you is okay, or, you know, just stay how you are. Right. There is no change. Right. And um, that's not the gospel because the gospel changes us. Absolutely. For our own good, to, right. be, to be more right. like Christ. So, thank you for pointing that out. Um, no, this is so, this is so good, <laughs> so needed. This is, and I, I really think um, that one thing you pointed out about you know we've let our guard down, and the church may not even realize. Maybe somebody Absolutely. listening may not even realize how important this topic really is. Right. Because it is coming in slowly. It is. It's it's not um, you know, we're not gonna wake up one day and be like, Oh, that just happened. No, it's we need to be on guard and hold fast. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with well, us. Well, I don't know about the wisdom part, but thank <laughs> you for allowing me to be here. Was there anything else you wanted no, to say? No, I you okay, know I don't want to cut you off. No, you're great. Yeah. I think, you know, just we just need to be diligent mm -hmm. in seeking the truth and, and challenging each other yeah. to to seek the truth. Mm -hmm. Um do you, would you say like in challenging each other that Christians should be open to having these conversations? Oh, absolutely. But I guess not being swayed, right? We want to stay right. firm. Yes. Yeah. So um, if a person's listening and maybe someone in their life thinks like this, it's not bad to talk to them sure. more, right? Absolutely. You know, it's okay to disagree. Mm -hmm. And if we don't disagree at times, even, even in the Christian faith, there's things that we may not agree on mm -hmm. and that's fine. But, um, you know, it, it, we may not agree on, I don't know, the way music is, a color of a carpet, but it comes back to that dogma. Yeah. And whenever we have that conversation with folks that are, are not believers, then we've got to understand that we're having a conversation with someone that doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we can't get offended about it. Yeah. And we can't go in with the idea of, well, I'm changing them right here, right now. Mm -hmm. That's not up to us. Like, yeah. But we can put, we can plant some seeds mm -hmm. and let God go crazy in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank God it's not up to us. <laughs> oh, it'd be a bad day. Bad, bad day. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate you coming thank and you. sharing. Um, thank you guys for listening. If you are on YouTube, leave some comments. Maybe we can get Jace to answer. Oh, some man. <laughs> I put you on the spot. There you go. Um, if you're on a podcast platform, share this with your friends and we will see you guys again next week. Bye.